Yes, we're back at the Fox on the Downs again, my lovely, almost like a second home as League of Films, but here we are again, and today I've got a special guest, I mean a really special guest, you know, who I've been crossing paths with, not swords, paths with for donkey years. I mean, we go back, we're going to work it out in the conversation, but it's someone I've known through equity, from all sorts of things, from local radio, um, and many other things that we're going to talk about now, and that of course is the fabulous, wonderful Mika Scott. Thank you. You're welcome, Lovely darling. To be here. Well, thank you. Now, Mika's on the red, I'm on the Guinness. Uh, which we don't normally have a drink, but today because it's such fun and it's a nice day, we're going to have a little drink, right? Cheers! So, Mika, when do you think you and I first met? It's been eight bloody years ago. Right. Well, I believe it was... I think you were working on the tour buses. Yeah, that is a long time ago. That is a long time ago, and I think that's when I met you. Mm-hmm. Because you did come to some of the do's we had, if I remember rightly, wasn't it? When you came down and had a few drinkies with us and all that sort of business. That's right, yeah. Because I used to do a lot, we remember back in those days, did a lot with the mayor. mayor That's right, yes, and all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So we always wanted personalities. Yeah. They didn't want me, they just wanted personalities. So <laughs> I would say, if it were because I did that for six or seven years, and of course I have went through several mayors. That sounds it's dreadful, doesn't it? And they said, oh, we want to do it, we, can we have a bit of a do? So we'd always organise something yeah. at the local yeah. restaurants. Yeah. Now, I remember, yeah. I would think you came, Betty used to come too. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, to all those. Because you wanted people with a bit of fun. You don't want just the can canates, dry roasted and the odd bottle oh, of Prosecco. No, yeah. You want the people that's going to be funny with you and all that. And that's what you certainly were. <laughs> So that, yep. that, that's a long time ago that, now. But that's, I believe that's when we first yeah. met. But because we've we crossed paths, that's what always makes me laugh about you, in the fact that we, seeing you, because we always seem to bump into each other in the street. <laughs> that's right. Importuning for an immoral purpose, no less, mm. if you know what I mean. But we, we do that, and it's always we have a little bit of a kiss, how are you, and all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And we just get on with the day and all that. So what are you that's doing it. now? What are you having for your tea? Oh, what am I doing now? Um, mm. Well, I'm sort of semi-retired now, um, and I write, mm -hmm. um, and I adapt. I adapt books. The, the last one I adapted was uh, Romeo and Juliet, strangely enough, and what I did, I rewrote it from the nurse's point of view. Now, that's interesting. And I, did, I actually did the show yeah. um, at the Fringe about two or three years ago. Mm -hmm. And it was just me and Juliet. And it worked very well. It worked very, Not very well. Not for Leonard Whiting inside. He was gorgeous from the film. Um, so you had an Olivia Hussey with you and you played the nurse. That's right, yeah. That's a bit Meg Jenkins, isn't it? <laughs> well, yeah, considering, I mean, I've done Romeo and Juliet. I was thinking about it on the way here. I think I've done Romeo and Juliet about four or five times now. I've played Prince and Prologue, I've played Nurse, and I've played Old Capulet. Oh, wonderful. I think he's a wonderful character, actually. I think he's an absolutely wonderful character. Yeah. I'm, I'm great. I enjoy Shakespeare. I don't, I mean, the only one I was in was Miss Summer Night's Dream, and I played Snout the Tinker. Ah, right, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, with the chink yeah. and all that. Uh, and uh, I've got great affection for that one. I mean, it's, mm. it's gone through many oh, phases. It, 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 it's, it, it's, it is tremendous. It, it's tremendous. One. I, how I, many other ones have you done? Just not. I've done. I've done Midsummer Night's Dream. I did that as a rehearsed reading at the Marlborough, mm -hmm. um, and that was really great because we just sat there with pads on our on our knees. Our lines were down there, mm -hmm. and you just got them off. It was wonderful. Yeah. And I can't remember what I paid in that. I think I played one of the three mechanicals, but I can't remember which one. Probably was Titania. <laughs> <laughs> no. My Oberon. <laughs> no, it's, it's a great show, isn't it? But I noticed that I was last night I was just thumbing through the detractors of BBC television and they're actually showing a lot of their original complete works of shows. Yeah, on last night was how do you like it? Yeah, I found it 
As you like, it's not one of my favourite shows. No, 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 no. Uh, and I found it rather hard going. But I thought she was marvellous. Mm. And bless her, she's not with us anymore. But when I was at Watford, and Gareth Rees was our Juliet. Oh. Such a wonderful... Married to uh, Christopher Cassino. Sorry? Was married to Christopher Cassino. Yeah. From Duchess of Dukes. That's he, right. He yeah. died too young, she yeah. died too young. That's right. That's and right. I had a letter from Anne Haggard um, when I asked him, they'd just done, um, I think he was on the last series where he gets, he dies in it, mm. of Duchess of Dukes Street with Gemma Jones. Mm. And um, I wrote to him, but I got a, a lovely letter back from him. I said, we'd love him to come and do the, the pageant thing mm. down in yeah, Winston yeah. in Kent. Yeah. He said he'd love to. He, he loved you, but he's still recording Dutch the Duke Street, so uh -huh. we can't do that on yeah, the yeah, particular yeah, yeah, date yeah, yeah, they wanted yeah. to. But well, a lovely little and she died too young, she had cancer. Oh, I don't. I just remember that uh, she came, she did Juliet for us, and she went away. And the next thing I know, by the end of the season, I think it was that quick, mm. by the end of the season, she was mm. gone. And uh, the, the husband had pancreatic cancer. Yeah, yeah, Lots of, lots of that about. Yeah, you know when you think about. I remember yeah. bumping into that lovely, rather sexy Patrick Swayze in a lift. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. We you know ghosts and all that malarkey. Mm, yeah, and of course a shadow of the former self because yeah. we had oh, pancreatic I'm cancer. Down. I was actually. You know, it's, I mean, but yeah. so many people get it these days, and they, as we sit around talking about our ills. We're not very good on our pins, are we, Mika? Not at the moment, darling, but we're working on it. Yeah. You've got the same problem I've got. And I don't think I don't mean Vino Tinto. Well what I'm going to do, um, I've looked them up and I'm going to buy one of these revitive machines. Oh yeah. And I've come across a make made in England. It's called Pure Mate. Mm hmm And I've found a site where you get recycled pure mates and instead of paying, I think they're about 144 quid, 300 quid think, yeah. you can get one for about 50, 60 quid. I have a friend uh, who occasionally co-presents with me on this show, Michael Ward. He's got one, he said it was an absolute waste of time, but it may be different for people. I asked yeah. my doctor about it too, yeah. and he said, no, I wouldn't bother. But it might help some people, you know. There you, you know, go. There you and, go. And, you know, I mean, it'd be quite nice to have that funny feeling. I mean, I'm, I'm no Ian Botham. <laughs> Hopping about. I think we ended up with all those problems at speak, you know, doing all those runs back and forwards at Lord. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so you've got, you've got a similar problem with neuropathy. Neuropathy. I've got sciatica. I've, I've had that. that. Yeah. Oh, I got rid nightmare. of it. Absolutely. Well, mine never, never will go away. Well, what I did, I bought one of these pads that you can wrap around the thigh because mm. I had it here and within three or four days mm. a lot of Is that what you heat up? No, 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 you just wrap it round. Oh. You don't have to heat it up, it doesn't have heat in it, it's just, I don't know what it is, it's like felt mm. and you wrap it round, wear it for the day mm. and it's quite comfortable. Oh yeah, well, mine's also attached to something called piriformis syndrome. Ah, well, right. I don't know about that. So, so that is a similar thing, but it's to do with the bastardised yeah. disc. So it's it's <laughs> can be loosened and it will come back. Mm. And I have had real bad, but I'm glad you're able to find something that can get. Well, the other back. thing which I'm doing is, and I swear by it because I've, I've got really, I've had really bad hips. I drink a tablespoonful of olive oil every morning. But it's special olive oil. Would it turn into a Spanish omelette? No. It's grown in volcanic soil, which means it has more polyphenols. Oh, yeah. It's 60 quid a bottle. Oh, for God. But I swear by it. I swear by it. Really? Yeah. I I fell on my hips years ago, landed badly, and I've had trouble with my hips ever since. I've been t I've been taking it now for ten days. Mm-hmm. No pain in the hips. 
I'm walking better. Well, touch wood, I don't have that situation. I mean, I've got diabetes and all the other anarchists and all that. I've got Reynolds syndrome. Good for diabetes, too. Is it? I'll have a word. I'll get it on here. You know what? Uh, but I've got Reynolds syndrome as well, which means the circulation's not all that good. And of course, my fingers can go purple. Oh, right. No, I don't have that. I've got, I've got type 2. Well, I used to have time. I've been diabetic for 36 years, and it's only in January that I ended up <laughs> having, a, having to go on to that. But I tell you what, it's a boom. In it, mm. insulin, mm. what a marvellous thing. Yeah. No, I, I, they gave me, what was it, metformin. Yeah, so I have to take that as well. And I won't take it. Oh, that one's okay. It's glycoside that is the one you've got to be worried about because it gives you pancreatic burn, which actually can really be bad. No, I won't pancreas. take metformin because a big report came out from America mm. which said it could cause cancer. Right. Oh. So I decided to do it with food. Oh. Well, that's good. Well, let food be your medicine. Yeah, well, I do. I mean, I. I'm, not, I'm always, I'm always in that situation where they're yeah. saying to me, you know, look, we're, we're sitting here with a glass of it. I'm not pregnant, by the way, so it's just got lots of iron in it, you know. Yeah, yeah. Or, and they say, oh, should you be having that? But they're all experts, you see. But it's not, it's not so much sugars that the problem is, it's because it's the carbohydrates converting to sugar. So yeah. if you, you know, and my endocrine specialist said, we've got to have some carbohydrates. I said, I like the whole bloody tobler own if I get my hands on it, but that's not going to happen, is it? Yeah. You know, but you know, the one thing I found in our, in our game in show business is no matter how you're affected by your health and all that, the passion's still there to get on and do it, oh, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. You know, yeah. and what passions do you have, you know, um, currently that you're doing? I mean, you're doing your writing. Yeah. Well, I've, I've just, what have I done recently? I've completed a poem, I've completed two poems, mm. one is on, on the, um, the ability to write poetry, if I can remember it. Here we go. Oh to, oh to write a line with a perfect metre, with rhyming couplets strong and stout, but of my poor verse there is no doubt, I'm not a poet and don't I know it as my meter starts to peter out. And on that note, we'll come back in a moment. And now we're back. Hello, Mika, here we are again. Again. Yes, yeah, so, you've done several um, theatrical portrayals over the years, you know, but you also had a big involvement with the local equity. Yes, I was chair for eight years. Eight years? Yeah. I have to thank equity. Really? Well, because of my position when yeah. I was caring, I couldn't do it because the young lads were 30 years and no community, and of course far too strong for That's right, that's right. Yeah. And of course, uh, some of um, Somebody said, or oh, get in touch with the um, Ben Millenum Fund at Equity. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I didn't expect anything. And they said, don't you worry about it, no, no lovely, no, it's all, mm. and send all this, da 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 da. They said it for 150 quid. Yeah, no, no, no I mean, they, they are very good. They yeah. are very, very good. Um, a couple of years ago, when we had COVID, mm. They had a terrible run on the Benevolent Fund until they literally had no money left. Mm. And Ian McKellen walked in and gave them £40,000. So they could continue. What a great actor. Oh, yeah, yeah. Worked not, with him years ago. Not very keen on Vicious, but uh, it has its moments. <laughs> it's all a bit over the top. I mean, it was a good cast, but my God, they didn't they play for laughs, didn't they? They played it. <laughs> Francis said it was hilarious, didn't they? <laughs> and that young lad who was in it too, oh, right. I don't know what his name is. Um, no, uh, he, he 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 has something attractive about him. I don't know what, quite what it is, but it was you know, he was saying, "Oh yes, I can, I can see why Derek and Ian are sort of oh it's yeah, it's yeah, Ash, yeah, you know? yeah yeah you know do you know why I looked and all this so you, you came quite <laughs> repetitive, but it's good fun. No, but that, uh, I do know people like the active benevolent fund. But that's another one that I'm, con I'm in contact with at the moment. Yeah, that's been hard work. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. 
And of course, Penny Keith was involved with that, and she, oh, yeah. she walked out. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I still, I still have their cars, their mm. Christmas cars. Mm -hmm. They sent me a list that went last week, and I'll choose what I want and send mm. the order off, and I'll have my Christmas cards. Mm -hmm. I don't do Christmas cards anymore. I think the only person I do a Christmas card is my dad. Yeah, well that's fair. Right? You know, but I think that you know it's 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 the one thing I like about Christmas. Cards. Cards. Sitting down, writing the cards, and getting them off. Yeah. It's the one thing I love about Christmas. Well, I, mean, I remember you know we used to go at the cyber when I was you know the agent mm -hmm. back in the day. We used to get owls and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. And. Uh, I was saying to Amanda, how the hell are we going to afford to send all these people cards? And of course you did the you know, clients and all that, you did that. And one or two casting directors, you did that as well. Yeah. And you'd get, you know what it's like, you'd get a card and you go, who the hell is that? I've no <laughs> idea who the hell that is. And then sometimes you can't even read, you have to look at the postmark. and say, well, look, who lives in Scumball? <laughs> I don't know. Do I know anyone in Scunthorpe? You know what I mean? It's it's that. But it, it, it's a joy because you know I, I over yeah. many years I paid Father Christmas, and it's the one joy I, I, I do miss with the kids. Yeah. But at the end of the day, and it's a good, it would be a good job for me now because all I have to do is sit down. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You know, that's right. Yeah. Uh, uh, but. Christmas. Is, I don't really do Christmas. I mean, they always. Well, I'm, I'm not. I'm not a big Christmas fan. Um, in fact, my neighbour, who was new to the block last Christmas, mm. and he, he was keen to sort of make friends and all that, and I, I came out of the door, he was sitting on the, on the bench, and he said, Happy Christmas! And I turned to him and said, Fuck Christmas! <laughs> well, they used to say, you must love Christmas. Have you been doing this since the middle of November, right through the 24th? If I see another bloody mince pie, I'm going to vomit. You know, but I love it for the kids. Yeah. Oh, I, I mean... And families, get bring families here, that's lovely. Yeah. I, I mean, I love doing Panto. Mm. Panto was fabulous. And you don't see yourself going back to Panto with your hips and all your other bits and pieces. <sighs> But it's that time of year, dear. I know it's that time Never of year. Never too late. I know it's that time of year, but I've come to the point where I think I'm more or less now semi-retired. Mm. And my writing is coming more and more to the fore. It doesn't stop you, though, from being in a film, does it? It's doing... Well, I thought, as it's you. We could... We could have a <laughs> we did. We did one recently, which was purely an impro, impro yeah. based on, um, sort of based on Big J. Yeah. I did it with Betty John, and of course he's the old performer lying in bed with his old makeup on and all that sort. Of, <laughs> looking like shit, and of course I come in as the carer, and it was just an improvisational thing, yeah, yeah. just to experiment with it. It is amazing what you can bring out. Waiting. Okay. Is that the only thing on your mind? Well, no, there's quite a few things on my mind. Yeah. I got your lotto. Well, I got your cider. I got nothing on that. And they didn't have you taking drumsticks. I got your half chicken, so you're going to have to eat it. Great, one of these down, didn't you? Oh, that'd be lovely. Thank you, dear. You are good to me, you know. Right. I don't know who else will be good to me as you are. No, no, I said, who's the name? He said, we haven't got any of that. I said, for that, because it gets to the stage now where all the other cast members have a lower pay because they're paying for this arse that used to, yeah. to read the yeah. weather on yeah. the box or something like that. And then you've got people that, you know, who are far more competent mm. in the certain roles to do it. You know, why, why would children, it's their first exploitation of themselves going into theatre and all that. Um, and uh, all they're seeing is people off the box. Well, my first panto was at Chelmsford. Chelmsford. <laughs> yeah. And um, I used to have to do a chase. I used to have to chase 
the hero down the centre aisle of the theatre and leap up onto the stage. And of course I had kids in and everything. And they were all against me and all for him. I don't know how it happened, but I was running down after him one day and suddenly all these bloody hockey sticks have appeared. The kids have brought their hockey sticks and cricket bats in with them. And as I leapt for the stage, one got a hockey stick and hooked it around my ankle. Is that on your face? Yeah. That you little sod. <laughs> I get up that I got up on that stage so fast you'd never believe it. <laughs> well you you were you know Yeah. Oh it was, it was, it was it wasn't like Centrinians. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I, I haven't done panto for many, many years. Mm. Uh, I did about three, I think, in my career. Mm. Uh, and I loved it. It got to the stage when it was becoming, you know, uh, the ordinary one performance and then mm. became two mm. performances and that's three performances a day. It's just too much. Well, I, I do remember when I was at Chelmsford. I forget how Christmas felt. It fell, rather. But I know we did a performance on Boxing Day. I jumped into my car, my mother was alive then, and I drove all the way to Manchester from Chelmsford. I had a Christmas day with her, drove all the way back, and I was back on stage on Boxing Day. Mm -hmm. What performance I hope. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, it's got the stage now. I think David's doing, he's doing Dick Whittington. And I said, well, any, any triples? He said, no, only two, two performances within the week. Yeah. And the rest is just one performance. Oh, that's it tires, it tires the yeah. people out. I, I, yeah, but I, I don't think people can afford it at the moment. Because the prices, I don't think the prices have gone down. Not for part. Well, I think every price in theatre has gone up, has not it? So, of course it has. Uh, course it has yeah. and, and these days, because television is so much more broad based on anything mm -hmm. that you can, mm -hmm. you know, you don't have to go to the National Theatre, you can watch it on the telly because it's all That's recorded right, yeah. as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. You, um, I, I recently invited up to the BFI to uh, uh, one of my chums who passed away a few years ago, Rene. Mm. and to go and see one of her films and there was a chat and would I get up and say to someone I said no I don't want to do that I'd rather not mm. um, I want to remember her as she was yes yeah, yeah. Um, and so a couple of friends went in said of me and they had a lovely time and I said mm. they're trying to get round I mean getting to London these days is impossible so getting you know Getting off to somewhere where you're going to do a panto and all that, and uprooting yourself for mm -hmm. two months or whatever it is. Yeah. You know, it's 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 something I don't think I could. Even well, I don't know whether I could do it again. I don't know. Um, I've well, since since I had my stroke, and you know, the the balance has gone. Mm. Um, I've more or less said that I don't think I could go back on stage at the moment. I can go back on stage sitting. I'm exactly sitting. You know, if, if it was a sitting play, I could do it, darling. No problem. Be marvellous in Abigail's Palace. <laughs> you, you could play soon. <laughs> Sims been vomiting again. <laughs> oh, I could do that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I, I, I'm the same because when it comes round, I mean, uh, working for this lovely man Stephen here and all that, yeah. he's always very understanding about my mobility problems and all that. <laughs> and uh, I'm called at the last minute to go and do a shot and all that. Yeah. And half the time he says, "No, you can sit down." <laughs> well, somebody said to me the other day. They said. Look, why, why don't you get a stick and it would be much easier for you? I said, I'm too young for a stick. I've got several sticks now. The one I use at the moment is the mother's. Oh. Yeah. And uh, I've got one of those, you know, those ones that go around yeah. and you know, I record my cuff stick. That, um, what I did, I was on the bus the other day and they said, oh, this old dear with that one of those things you can turn into a seat and sit down. I said, now that's what I want. No, I... If I get anything, it's going to be a cane, and it might even be a sword cane. That's a bit, that's very John Steed of you, isn't it? Very Avengers. Well, yes, but I, I'm of that mode. Oh, yes, I can see that. You're, you're very much the M appeal for the man appeal. This day, isn't <laughs> yes, I can see that. No, I, I, I really, you know, when I was 
loves like an actual person, the horses and water skiing and stuff like that. Yeah. Right, bicycle riding. Oh no. <laughs> you know, I don't think I could ever consider doing anything that, uh, you know, when you see some of these nine-year-olds throwing themselves out of aircraft, you know, doing a parachute because it's on their bucket, it's like, oh no, thank you. No, 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 no I, I, I've drawn the line under a couple of things like that. You know, and it's nice to be that if it's something you really want to, I mean, like, oh, William Shatner going up in space for four minutes or whatever it was. Not right, yeah. You know. Um, not as if he's not been far away, you know, in a galaxy, whatever, for long, you know, for, for all those years. But yeah. um, it, it's that sort of thing. I don't think I've got a bucket list. Have you got a bucket list? I've got a book which claims to be the actor's bucket list. Oh yeah. And I've looked through it, and there's nothing in there that I fancy. Absolutely nothing. Really? Yeah. Apart from. Maybe doing, there are a couple of parts I'd love to do. Long I'd love to do, pardon? As long as you're sitting down. <laughs> as long as you're sitting down. Mm. No, I mean, I was offered, but I couldn't get out to America for it. I was offered um, the Scottish play. Mm -hmm. I was offered the mother, mm -hmm. which I would love to do. Because mm -hmm. um, that's how I trained. Mm -hmm. I trained, my first training was in the fairgrounds, in the old travelling fairgrounds. And they had side shows. And they'd have the freak zoo, they'd have the dog faced woman, they'd have the two headed man, which I, I actually fronted, uh, the Hammer House of Horror, which I fronted. Mm -hmm. And that was during the era of Dr. Fivey's. Oh, Dr. Fines, yeah, with Vincent Price. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that, that was a... But I was on, I was on the... I made one mistake when I was fronting that. I was on, on the mic, spieling away, and I said something totally out of context, and I said, if this show doesn't frighten you, come up to me and I'll take you around the back and I'll frighten you. Well, within minutes... Okay. Within minutes, to me, this old woman leapt up, wrapped her arms round me and said, Take me now! Take me now! <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, it, it's all that era. Is, uh, you know, they call them horror films, don't they? Mm. Hammer, Universal, yeah, all, yeah. all that. Amicus Film Productions, mm. all that. And uh, you look at them and you think, you know, especially horror films, well, they're, they're gothics, they're not really horror films. Well, I saw one, not a Hammer film, but I saw one, and it was made, I think it was made in the Soviet Union or Romania or somewhere mm. like that. And they just kept everything in it. The camera turned and they kept everything. And there was one scene where some guy leapt on his horse and he went right over, kept it in. But the, what had me in hysterics there was a scene in a sort of bedroom, and it was a vampire movie. Now, I don't know what it was, but at the bottom of the frame, there was this thing that kept coming up like that and going down while they were in bed. I was in hysterics. Did you ever find out what it was? I have no idea. I have no idea. Well, I must say, I've uh, we worked for Stephen on the so many films now and all of that. I've played Dracula or Nosferatu yeah. uh, and the devil several times. Yeah. Talk about typecasting again. I, we haven't got <laughs> quite round to the Frankenstein monster, but that's another story. Yeah. Um, and it's always great, grand stuff to do do something like that. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. it's wonderful. And, uh, uh, I, I do enjoy it. I wouldn't have thought, considering Dad's neighbour was Peter Cushing, you know, mm. that I'd be uh, appearing in Gothic yeah, yeah, horror, yeah, horror films, yeah. Um, which people do these days. And you look at some of the horror stuff today, and you go, "What?" And it's all a bit naff. Yeah, I know, I know. You know, I know. I know. They, I know. They, they've redone the TV series of the film and the book. Well, it was Interview of the Vampire, and that is just mm, I haven't seen that, but I remember when I was about what fifteen or sixteen, there were all these really horror films coming out. 
And I remember one. It was called Camp on Blood Island. Oh yes, yeah, I remember that one. Yeah. You know, people getting their heads chopped off and all that kind of thing. Oh, that was horrific. Yeah. That was really horrific. I saw it once, I wouldn't go back in. Well, I remember when I was very, very young, when The Exorcist came out. Oh, gosh, yes. And I went to see that, and I was in my earliest teens, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. And I knew the, uh, the Oxford Cinema in Whitstable. Yeah. Uh, the guy there, Jimmy's name was, the mm. manager, mm. and he was always very kind to me. He said, mm. no, don't say anything, you go and watch it. Mm. Didn't do anything for me, don't get scared by it at all. Well, I, I saw it in Leicester Square, and it was in Leicester Square. And I was living in a flat in Shepherd's Bush. Mm. Had my own little room, bedroom. And I saw this and I thought, oh, Gosh. Anyway, I went home, had a drink, went to bed, and I woke up in the middle of the night and I could hear this trickling sound up and down the wall. And then something landed on my bed. I hit the light switch running. I don't remember getting out of bed. I hit the light switch running. And what it turned out to be, I had a bookshelf on the wall. Yeah. And the trickling sound was the plaster as it broke away from the screws. And after it broke away, then the whole thing went and onto my bed. I was, I was thinking that your bed was going to rise. No, darling, no, 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 nothing like that, nothing like that. That was enough. That it could, was have, enough. could have been the thing going up and down, darling, all you know. <laughs> Still, all right, we'll be back in a second. And welcome back, here we are again. And we're joined this time, yes, by an old stalwart of mine. We go back a long time. I call her Betty, a lot of people call her John. She's been called many things after many things over the years, haven't you, Dean? Definitely, yeah, yeah. lots yeah. of things. But uh, the wonderful thing Mika and uh, John have is they've appeared on stage together. Yeah. Now, come on, spill <laughs> the beans. But I once did a play years and years ago and it was written by two women. They were a couple. And the title of the play was Peter, Pam and Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely threesome. <laughs> I can't tell you what's going through my mind. <laughs> It'd be nothing like the play, I can assure you. <laughs> uh, was it funny? No. <laughs> in no, a word, it, no. It, it was semi-serious, but we did it on a rake stage. Okay. And they brought up, they said, we've got the furniture, we'll bring the furniture. And all the furniture had casters on it. <laughs> As you were shifting your way through into the audience. So I'm busy nailing pieces of wood. To stop it all coming up. Yeah. Huh? I did a play um, in Notting Hill mm. in a community centre there and I was playing uh, a police inspector mm. and I had the full rig on, the full yeah. uniform and I'd come on and I came on one night and there was a hell of a bang and a crash from the back of the auditorium and being Notting Hill two druggies had got in and they were sitting on the floor by the back wall they saw me come in <laughs> and I'm holding the little girl <laughs> through the door like you never know. <laughs> Yo. oh, I love it, I love it. That's great. <laughs> it's times like that when you want to have a camera there. Yeah. 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 So I'd love to see that again. <laughs> <laughs> but my favourite story is an American story. And it's, I don't know the name of the play, but it's about this play and the lead character halfway through, makes an entrance on, on a donkey. Now the donkey was brilliant. It hit its marks every night, no problem. Anyway, one night, it hit its marks, it stood there, 
and suddenly it sneezed. <laughs> now, if you've ever seen a donkey sneeze, you know what's coming. <laughs> its snout was covered in green slime. And there was one young actor in the crowd, and he piped up, My lord, would you like me to wipe your ass? The whole house went up. <laughs> the whole house went up, and they tried, and they tried, and they tried again to get going again. But the house wouldn't let them. They were just falling about, and they had, they had to shove the performance. <laughs> Well, that's what you want, you know. If, if, you know, if we play a bit napped on it, we'll say put something else in it. Don't you? You, might, you might attend, you know, some family with the audience in those days. You know what I mean? But um, I don't really, I personally don't do stage at all. Uh, and uh, uh, I, I think it is like Betty. It's 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 it retaining the lines mm. is very difficult. And I admire someone who can do it. You know, absolutely. Oh. I, I used to work with somebody, and they had a photographic memory, mm. which in weekly you needed, mm. because you've got one on and you're rehearsing the next one, mm, yeah. and as you know, and I always struggled with lines. I didn't get my lines down until the fourth or fifth rehearsal. Mm. I just couldn't. Mm. You know, I, I had to get into them, but this person had a photographic memory. But a week later, after the show was over, if she asked him about the line, couldn't no, remember a thing. Couldn't remember a thing. Sort of gift, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, mean, I, I, I I've done several films with Stephen and all that, and uh, mm. he's very kind, as long as you get the gist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, the, the I'm, I'm a fan of Strictly, and I was reading something about it the other day, and Tess is always on her lines, no problem with her. But the other one, she makes it up as she goes along. Gloria Winkleman. Yeah. yeah. You can tell that. You can tell yeah. she, she does. Yeah. 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 I, it's, not, it's not a show I watch. I mean, although it's um, always has some incredibly nice looking chaps in it. But they do, yes. Yes, I must say, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I just don't know how the work could have. I did see a glimpse of it last night, which was the Halloween one. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I couldn't stop laughing at the, the, the four judges dressed as they were. The one was mm -hmm. the Wicked Queen from Stoke Point. Yeah. yeah. I, I, they, they put a lot of spooky things in there, or so called spooky things, but I get really annoyed with that. Mm. You know, it, it's just childish. Mm. Let's get on, let's get, you know, it's about the dance, let's yeah, get on yeah, with yeah. it. No, I admire all of them. I mean, I, I, you know, I mean, that's the only thing I would be able to do to push you through the time warp. I don't think I could do anything else. <laughs> don't you? Dancing yourself doing a tango, though. And that's when we rumba. Well, those days are gone. Darling, I used to belong to a church social group, and we used to hold dances in the local cinema. And I became an expert at the Valita. Right, how about the Valita? The Gay Gordon. Oh, yes. oh the Gay Gordon. The Gay Gordon. Gordon. Oh, with, aye. With Gay Gordon over there. Oh, aye. Oh, aye. Well, being from a Scottish family, we used to do that back yeah. in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the Gay Gordons. I couldn't do it now. We didn't have to do it now. <laughs> oh, true. Just go up and do a video of the Gay Gordons. You know, I mean, you, know, you can mm. still laugh about thinking people are drinking gin. It's all flipping round. And, yeah, yeah, chucking yeah. yourself round yeah. the room, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but you also did radio, didn't you, as well? Yeah, I, I did local radio, um, and I used to have a blues show, because blues is my music. Mm -hmm. I love the blues. And the interesting thing about blues, historically, they started at the beginning of the 1900s, really. Mm -hmm. And the first major blues singers were all women. Mm -hmm. The men came in later. It was the women who sang the blues, mm. not the men. Mm. And I've got some in my collection. I've got some examples of that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but you don't do that anymore because I used to do a radio show too. But that's gone. To, gone. That was years and years ago. Yeah, I, I just, I just got fed up with it in the end. Mm. You know, um, I admire people who can do things like that for eons and keep it fresh and that was mm. what I was always worried about keeping it fresh mm. 
uh, you know, I used to have a co-presenter in, and I said, in the middle of this blues pro blues program, she'd just come in, and I said to her, I said, oh, by the way, I don't know what your favourite music is. Do you know what she said? The monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> Good old David Jones. <laughs> One of, my, of one of my first crushes, too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, but I, I, I used to just leave it to my producer to put yeah. the music because I would never listen to No, that. no, I, I always picked it. I always made up the programme. I got the, sorted out the running times, mm. all that. Yeah. And then, then what I would do is I would go in, I'd hand the whole lot over to the engineer, mm -hmm. and I'd just sit there and do the programme. Yeah. Because I knew what I was doing. Yeah. How long was the program? Now, an hour. An hour. All oh, right. Now I was my show only went out on a Sunday and it was three hours long. Um, but I really enjoyed doing it. And I yeah. Enjoyed it. Oh yeah. Yeah. It. yeah, I enjoyed it. And I used I used to do change and change about with it because suddenly I realised that I had a source of music, mm -hmm. not just from what I was getting, not just from my own collection, but there were people sitting on the street playing guitar or you know singing or whatever mm. and they always had records to sell mm. cds to sell so i used to do a feature in the program mm. and it wouldn't be blues necessarily which i called off the streets mm -hmm. and i'd play their cds or a track from their cd wonderful because it's a good opening gamble for people, isn't it, as yeah. well? Because, they, yeah. you, know, you know, but these days, anyway, you can, you can go and do a blog, and you know, this, that, and the other, mm. and all that, mm. and all these uh, um, people on YouTube, and all that sort of, you know, good for them, and all that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, I, I just think, you think, you know, we're saturated these days. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. With, with, but well, it's a multi-million dollar business now. Mm, mm. You know, and it's something, it's something, I'd like to go back and do it occasionally because I really enjoyed the pro process of it. Yeah. Um, and like most things I do, nothing was really planned because mm -hmm. I'd leave all the music to yeah. Dick his name Yeah. Um, no, I like to have control because, because it was a specialist programme. Yeah, yeah. I like to have control. We've covered all sorts of things, but the majority of the guests would be theatricals. Yeah, yeah. We'd always have, you know, I would, might have one of the mayors in for a giggle and all that. No, um, I used to have musicians in, I used to have blues musicians mm -hmm. in, um, and I'd get them to do a solo, you know. Yeah, lovely. Oh, yeah, well, beautiful. But you, did, you didn't have anything to do with latest TV? No, I've not done anything with latest TV. Um, I saw, I've seen a couple of things on it, mm -hmm. uh, and shall we say I'm a little underwhelmed. Yeah, well it, it's, it's, you know, it, I think the resources that they have to produce product transmission are not there anymore, and I think a lot of it is just repeat, repeat, repeat. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, what you try to do is, you know, you've got to, you've got to entice an audience, right? It's going to have the smallest audience going for a TV station, unlike something like Talking Pictures, which has mm -hmm. gone from strength to or strength. Or Radio Reverb, right? Yeah, you know, going from strength to strength. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, because it's, it's, it's diverting all sorts of things, it's mm -hmm. getting interesting people in talking, a bit, no, like no, a, yeah. a bit like this show really, yeah, getting interesting yeah. people in yeah, talking yeah, about what yeah, they like yeah, and all yeah. that. And yeah. I, I just think sometimes you think, well what a waste, mm -hmm. you know, everything could be, you know, it could broaden up the outlook and Brighton, as we well know, is quite a diverse oh, and, it is. Uh, and it's got yeah, some yeah. wonderful people who, yeah, who, who yeah, are so yeah. creative and talented yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, and you just don't see a hide and a hair of it. No, I know you don't. You know, I know you don't. But you know, and that's the way it is, and that's how life is. But I mean, I, I, I've always laughed when they joke when people have sort of turned their nose up like coming on my show. <laughs> you know, they go, "Oh, I don't know. I've got nothing to promote," and that's not about promoting anything. It's you know about talking about you. The fact is, what you've got to think about is uh, um, an interesting thing that an audience would be interested in, mm. wanting to hear about. It. Histories yeah. and things like that. Yeah, yeah. And that's that's the way I believe it should work. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. But I mean, I when I started in this business, we, um, won't, we won't say which year. 
Darling, I worked it out. I've been 52 years a pro. Ooh, that's a long time. I would just about beat you. Really? If you include when I started at the age of four, mm. okay. that will be um, 59. Yeah. Yes, that would be. Okay, fair enough. But, yeah, but off and on. Mm. Yeah. yeah, oh, sure. You, I mean, can't, you can't be in a situation where, you know. I'm, I mean, as I say, I didn't go to drama, well, I did go to drama school eventually. All would have been fascinated by physical performance, mm -hmm. stage performance. Mm -hmm. um, and that magic space between you mm -hmm. and the stage, mm -hmm. which everything sort of comes across. Yeah. You know, if you get too close, you can see the pace, jewellery, you can see, and it goes. But if you're at the right distance, mm -hmm. it all looks brilliant. Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. I remember I was at Watford. I've done three reps. I've done Chelmsford, Watford, and the Dukes at Lancaster. Mm -hmm. And I was at Watford. And we were doing Romeo and Juliet, of course, the only play I've ever done in a way. Um, and I was an ASM in those days. And so it fell to us to do the opening scene and the fight which opens Romeo and Juliet. And so our fight director decided that he wanted to go with axes, but he looked at the two of us and he thought, no, that's too dangerous. And <laughs> so we had these belts with great big buckles on them, whirling around our heads, you know. Do you bite your thumb at me, sir? I do bite my thumb, sir. Mm. And part of the choreography was I would be sort of hit and I'd fall on the floor. I'd be lying on the floor, waiting for him to come like that, and then I'd move. Well, I was lying on the floor and nothing was happening. <laughs> and I took a look sideways at the audience and I saw his bum going over the edge of the stage. And I heard this plaintive little voice say, Can I have my belt back, <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, we've been a lovely chat today. It's our time up now. But I'd like to thank Mika for coming my on pleasure, today. My and pleasure. it's been a great fun. It's been lovely to see Betty again. Thank you. And all right, you've also done Chelmsford. We did it together. Oh, we did Chelmsford. Chelmsford. Quite a few times yeah. I did Chelmsford. Yes. I didn't know it was on the other side of the tunnel, but there we yes, are. Yes, there you go. But thank you again, Mika. Oh, thank my you, pleasure. Betty. Thank you. And um, I, I do think we might want to get more of your uh, poem at some point, so okay. we could put that as a voiceover or whatever, see what okay. we can do. But okay. I do think, you know, as you're a writer as well, we might come up with some ideas as an synopsis to do a film, but, you know, a short yeah. film in January. Okay. Uh, put that seed in your mind. Okay. So, again, my darling. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. My, my darling. Yeah. Thank you. And thank you again for watching Mark and Chum's number 22. And I don't think we've come up with a title yet. No, I'll do a very short one. This one is called Eclipse. Eclipse is when the moon gets in the way of the sun. That is called Eclipse. That was shortened to the point. It was, wasn't it? <laughs> it was very large. Concise.